The community complained, and Horizon listened. With the newest generation of the Timber, many convenience-based updates were added. These include a battery hatch on top, quick wing connectors, and a main gear plate redesign. But did these features come at a cost, or is it the best aircraft Horizon has ever released? While the Turbo Timber Evolution came out in July almost a year ago, we decided to wait on doing a review until we could spend a full year with it. We wanted to get to truly know everything about it, including common failure points to be aware of. During our year of testing, we did everything from your average day at the field, some mild 3D, and even took it to some technical strips, and it held up most of the time. You might think we're crazy for flying it where we did, but Horizon does market it as a stole capable airplane right on their website. However, it really isn't set up for that right out of the box. Let's start by looking at our preferred setup for this bird. First off, we'd highly recommend taking the prop off the plane and replacing it with a 13x4 two blade for two reasons. One, there's more thrust. Two, the stock 11x7 three bladed prop pulls 52 amps at full throttle static thrust, while the 13x4 only pulls 41. This leads to better flight times and a more efficient setup. Next, we move the control linkages on the elevator and rudder to the furthest out hole on the servo arms and closest in on the control arms for maximum deflection. Then, we went onto our radio and set control throw to the max travel we could get before binding the servos, which was actually 150%. You know what they say, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Expo is always a personal preference, but we go with 20-30% to 30 on all our control surfaces. We also prefer to fly ours on a 2200 mAh 4S to keep it lighter. For center of gravity, we rest the battery against the foam ledge at the back of the battery tray area. Moving the CG further aft increases the plane's controllability primarily on the pitch axis, which is great for bush flying in mild 3D. Finally, we got rid of the AS3X and safe receiver because AS3X does limit your available travel to 100% on your radio, even if you set it to 150%. We use a Spectrum AR620 instead. Let's start by looking at how the Timber Evolution performs at the edge of its envelope with some backcountry flying. First off, you must be respectful with this plane. It isn't a plane where you can get uncoordinated in high angles of attack, yank it around, and have it predictably mush around. This bird will bite you, especially because of the higher wing loading. Without using a proper upset recovery, when flying uncoordinated, it will go into a full-on asymmetric stall and then a spin from there. For this reason, we recommend this as a good second airplane to anyone getting into the hobby. Back to bush flying. Flying in confined spaces with this bird is a challenge. She doesn't quite slow down as much as one would hope, primarily due to her high wing loading. We tend to use the Fun Cub as a golden standard, wing loading-wise, for park flyer stole airplanes. In comparison, the Fun Cub has a wing area of 589 square inches with a wing loading of 9 ounces a square foot, whereas the Timber Evolution has a wing area of 559 square inches with a wing loading of 14 ounces a square foot. That's a significant difference and affects the way that she flies. The Evolution does, however, come with slotted flaps, which is extremely beneficial for bush flying and slow flight, and are uncommonly used by most RC manufacturers. We'll keep the explanation short, but slotted flaps allow for high pressure air to flow through the slot, which adds energy to the wing's boundary layer. It also decreases drag and delays airflow separation. This all, in turn, creates a lot of extra lift that plane flaps would not incorporate. In layman's terms, these flaps help a lot with bush flying, whereas if it had plane flaps, the gains you'd see in lift would be quite a bit less. Speaking of gains, another thing we really love about the timber when bush flying it is its responsive tail section. Doing tight approaches often require quick and demanding inputs, and it's great when the aircraft doesn't run out of available control authority. On the topic of tight approaches and wing loading, the timber does like to come in fast during technically demanding approaches. Horizon added a feature to this timber that somewhat throws a band-aid over this complaint, reverse thrust. Reverse thrust allows for the airplane to fly in almost all the same places we could fly a fun cup. It greatly reduces your ground roll. However, without lots of practice, we'd strongly suggest only using it once your mains are on the ground in order to avoid a nasty crash. Reverse thrust brings a new type of flying that most people haven't ever experienced, and you can do it right out of the box, which is great. It's just as we like it. Fly different outside the box. Speaking of reverse thrust, a huge benefit to it comes into play on floats, which the Timber Evolution comes with right outside the box as well. Backing up, backing up. Being able to get yourself out of trouble by literally backing up your plane on the water is a game changer. She really makes an awesome float plane and can still do fun stuff like hovering with the added weight of the floats. She also snaps much more violently with the floats, which is fun to witness. The water rudders, that's right, she's got two, are excellent and provide top-notch controllability in the water while idle taxiing. 
Moving back to hard surface ops, let's move into the Turbo Timber Evolution's Achilles heel. With the older generations of timbers, the main gear plastic plates would usually take a while to fail, but when they did, they would break one or both plastic gear plates. This would essentially total the aircraft after a few reglues because the only way to truly replace it required ordering a new fuselage. Horizon did listen to the community's complaints on this and fixed it by making the main gear have one solid mounting plate. However, when you strengthen one thing, it weakens another, which created a new problem, the springs. It's already broke. Actually? Yep. Oh my god. Gotta love it. Woke up and here we are. That's BS. <laughs> As the saying goes, it's not if they will fail, but rather when they will fail. It's almost like Horizon sneakily created a subscription service for the timber gear springs. If you don't believe us, just take a look at their website from time to time. The springs are almost always out of stock, which is likely because they can't keep up with the demand. So, if you want a Turbo Timber Evolution, be sure to keep as many extra springs on hand as possible. One other problem that Horizon fixed with the new Evolution is better wheels, even though they look the same. On our OG Timbers, the tire would start to separate from the hub, and it's worth noting that we haven't had this happen yet on our Evolution, nor does it show any signs of it developing. As far as bush flying, she's not our first pick, but isn't bad by any means. There's better, lighter stole aircraft out there, but that doesn't mean that the timber isn't a good solution if that's the type of flying you enjoy doing. The best way that we could sum it up is that the timber is more of an all-around airplane. If Horizon put all their effort into making this a true bush aircraft, we're sure it would be irreplaceable, but they tried to make it a lot more than that. She's also meant for scale flying in some mild 3D, which limits this bush flying envelope. It's also important to note that the additional upgrades that Horizon added for ease of assembly ultimately did add weight, which doesn't help aid in true stole flying, which is what we really were wanting out of it. Making a plane a jack of all trades really is more of a glass half full than half empty thing, because it's a great plane to have in your fleet that can do a little bit of everything. Speaking of 3D, let's look at what it does well, and not so well. Hovering. It's totally possible to hover and torque roll the timber, but don't expect it to be as easy as a true mid-wing or low-wing 3D airplane. If you don't stay on top of it, when the timber tries to depart a hover, it isn't always the easiest to get back into it. If you're going to be doing torque rolls or hovering, we very highly recommend going with the 13x4 prop. Otherwise, you'll be hovering at nearly full throttle with the stock prop, and that means that if you need to punch out of any bad situation, you're stuck. The stability issues in hovering are likely caused by the side effects of trying to make a high-wing hover, but at least it can still do it. On the topic of pulling some ants while hovering, speed controllers overheating is a known issue with this bird. Horizon is aware of it and released a product bulletin with their fix, which was sliding the ESC forwards towards the nose for better cooling. Our band-aid to reduce amp draw was changing our prop, but even with the prop change and ESC reposition, you'll still likely find that the ESC is hot to the touch after most flights with higher power settings. We recommend waiting for 15 minutes or so between flights to avoid thermal cutoff from cutting your flight short, especially if you're using the stock prop. The timber also has minimal coupling, which makes knife edges a breeze. Once you're established in a knife edge, it stays in it no problem with only slight aileron corrections necessary. It doesn't have the tendency to flip on its back and feels locked. The lack of coupling also ties into helping with our favorite maneuver, the slow roll. The plane also does awesome pop tops, knife edge spins, and even inverted flat spins. Throwing the sticks into the corners during an upline generally results in something worth seeing. Let's move on to flying the timber as a Sunday flyer. If this is the type of flying you default to, go buy one right now. This is really where this plane excels, general purpose flying. If you want a relaxing plane to fly on a nice Sunday morning that can do a little bit of everything, this is the perfect airframe. It even works well with a buddy box for training, but we still don't recommend this as your first aircraft because it does have some of the bad habits we talked about that are best kept out of the hands of a beginner. If you want a general purpose plane that will last for years, the Turbo Timber Evolution delivers. You asked, and Horizon came through. There we go. Yeah!